So it's a great pleasure to have Antonio from the University of Sao Paulo to uh, start, to begin this uh, seminar. And he will speak today about interacting process with um, variable length. So Antonio, uh, it's a great pleasure to have you and I'll just um, stop speaking and give you um, now the, the, the word. Thanks, Antonio. Okay, it's it's a pleasure for me also to accept to be invited by by Claudio to start this new series of seminars. I remember that long time ago, Claudio insisted that we should organize in a systematic way a school every year. Uh, we, we, we had a, a, a tradition to organizing workshops, inviting people, but what is not regular. And, Pab, and Claudio insisted that it, it would be important to do something which occurred every year in uh, the same period of the year. And of course, he was right. The Brazilian School of Probability is a very successful activity, probably one of the responsible for the important quality of um, Brazilian probability group. So I hope this seminar will play the same important role uh, helping Brazilian probabilists and Brazilian all around the world because probabilists in Brazil are uh, well connected with the world since the very beginning. Okay, uh, as you see, I'm presenting myself as Universidade de São Paulo, but out CEPID Neuromar. CEPID means Research Innovation Dissemination, Centro de Pesquisa uh, e Difusão. Uh, in, in neuromathematics. This, this is a long-term project found by FAPESP. Um, I may be involved in this project since uh, 2003. It's an important project uh, putting together mathematicians, uh, mostly probabilists and, and statisticians, but mostly probabilists and neurobiologists. And the reason is that because neurobiology has so many uh, fascinating questions and phenomena that requires to be modeled and the models, I believe, uh, essentially probably probabilistic models. So uh, in the center, we have uh, two main lines of research and I'm going to speak about one of them, which is these new classes of models, uh, interacting variable length memory process, which, which, which have been produced as a model for system with spiking events. So uh, I, I try to make a survey and I know that survey is always a dangerous thing to do because we maybe I try to, to tell too many things and to be impossible to follow or maybe I will stay only in the surface, but I hope I, hope I will succeed giving you a flavor of what I have been doing. So interacting point process with memory of variable lengths. So it's a system with a constant number of interacting components. And then uh, when you read the first line, this reminds you of course, interacting Markov process. The, the, the seminal paper that Frank Spitzer wrote in the 70s, interacting Markov process, and which was at the origin of the Brazilian probability school. But in our case, what we want to, to do is to describe the activity of a spike in neurons. And um, well, and this has some features which are very specific, in particular the non the fact that this time evolution is not Markovian. It's uh, it has a memory which can be very long. It's essentially under the changes from a past to another past. So the spiking rate of a neuron, the, 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 the moment in which the point process has an, an atom, it's a function, a non decreasing function of what's called the membrane potential. And the membrane potential of each component, each neuron, is a sum of the influence it receives after its last, last spike time. Now, important thing is that the spikes can be either excitatory or inhibitory. So it's more or less like a, a group of people discussing. 
there are people that uh, have a positive influence on you, people who has a negative influence on you, and people who has no influence at all, neither positive or negative. So spike are like this, uh, it is a very large group of components, 10 to the power 11. An important thing is that after spiking, each neuron reset its value to zero. And that, that's what explains the fact that they have a memory of variable length. The memory is reset. It starts again every time it spikes. So let me, let me be more precise. So I have a, a, countable, a, a countable set I. It's a set of all neurons. I will consider a, a discrete time evolution. A discrete time evolution, I call it Xn of i, so Xn of i is a configuration. Yes? Só estamos vendo a sua primeira transparência. Não estamos vendo... Ah, ah ok. Uh, stop share. I guess it's something to do with my sharing. Uh, it's better now? Oh, we don't see anything. You don't say anything, okay. Yeah, I just so, see uh, you. Uh, and now, oh, well, let me see. You, what you see now, share yes. screen, yeah, share yeah. screen, share screen. Uh, so in principle, you, are you, no, yeah. are you seeing my screen now? No, we don't see your screen. Now, now, yes. now we see your screen. Interacting and, point plus is member of variable length. Yeah, maybe you can change. Uh, uh, just go to the next one to see if it's working. Yeah. Ah, okay. Uh, okay. No, but uh, I must must do it here. Okay. It's working. Okay. Yeah, it's working. Thank you. Okay. Good. So, uh, so uh, <laughs> I'm considering a system with a constant number of interacting components that I we call neurons, and each neuron spikes from time to time. And that's the point process. The point process indicates the times in which the the neuron spikes. The spiking rate is a non-decreasing function of its membrane potential, and the membrane potential is the sum of all the influence is a neuron receives after its last spike time. Important. Every time a, a neuron spikes, it resets its value to zero. Well, uh, this is a convention, it's not zero, it's my, my, minus 70 millis, millivolts, but I mean, let put it. And the influence of the other neurons can be either excitatory or inhibitory. So that's a test. Um, let me see if I can. Okay, so let me be more precise and put some mathematical formula. So I have a contab set of neurons, and I have a configuration which is, which is indexed by time, discrete time, and by the the, comp the elements of this set of neurons, x n of i. So um, XNI is either one if a neuron I spikes at window time N or zero otherwise, so this is missing. So it's one when the neuron spikes and it's zero if it, if it does not spike. So FN is the usual sigma algebra generated by the past up to time N. And, and now, so, Let's, let's tell you how it evolves in time. So you take a, a finite subset of positions in I and you, you, and you, you, you define a sequence of elements X, I, I belong to, to F, which could be either zero or one. So you ask, what is the probability that uh, at time N plus one, an even I um, spikes or not according to X, I, for all i in f given the past. So the first thing is that conditioned in the past, this decision is made independently. So 
the second thing I must tell you how, how or what is this value here. So the probability of, of heaven uh, spiking or not given Fn is actually a function of the history of a set of neurons. So, so, so when I put here, this is a finite set, uh, is, a, is a subset of I. So I mean, the, the, uh, it depends on the value, all the values of the neurons here. And uh, during a certain interval of time. So this interval of time ends at time n, and it starts immediately after neuron I had its last spike before time n. So Li of n is a, is a stopping time. It is the time, the last time neuron I had a spike before time n. So uh, that's, now I, I must tell you something about this. So I give you, so I, I hope this is clear. The, the first component that uh, given the past, the decision of spiking or not in the next time window is made independently by each neuron, take into account the information of the past. And uh, this decision is made, uh, is under the influence of um, what happened with a set of neurons, this set V point I in the past, the past ending at time N and starting in the time immediately after the last spiking time of I. So uh, this is just as, uh, to explain my notation. So this is uh, all the histories uh, between L, I, N, and N for all the neurons in this set. This is a set of neurons which influence, have an influence on I. So if it is as clear, uh, I go a step forward. Yes. Okay. Um, what's going on? Okay, so the set of V point I is a set of, so, into, so L I of N, this is last spike time of neon I. So I, I try to return, so I hope it will work this way. I, I, I use to full screen mode, let me see. You, you tell me, okay. You tell me if it's, if I can change my neurons. Yes. Uh, so, Okay. Okay. So uh, uh, two information here. One that the decision to spike or not, give, given the past, is made independently by each neuron. Second information that this decision depends on the history of the system. Antonio didn't change. So we are still on page sixteen. Or... Okay. So, so for some for for some reason is sharing screen which is making problem. I don't know why. So share screen. I don't understand why. So it's the first time I, I, I use Zoom like this. It's okay? Yes, okay. now. Okay, uh, let's keep trying. Um, and then, uh, then I don't know how to move. <laughs> uh, so I cannot. Ah, okay. Yeah, not good. So, uh, so let me say it in words. So neurons talk to each other by firing, by firing sequence of bits. In neuroscience, bits are called action potential or spikes. This is an or, or. It's not off, it's an or, or spikes. Duration of spike is very short, about one millisecond. So the way uh, I record data is that I look at time windows and I tell you in each time window which are the neurons who had a spike. And I put one or zero to say uh, if there is an activity or not. So this is exactly reminiscent of what we do 
when you consider uh, uh, the contact process or the water model in discrete time. So probably you know that uh, discrete time uh, is more complicated to, to, to represent, but more elementary to present to people. So, uh, but it's not important here. So the point process with the time that which a new spike is called a, a spike train. Uh, uh, can, can you see the entire picture or, or these this images are? Um, no, we can, can see. see. Yeah. We can see, okay, good. Uh, so and this set V point go to I is a set of neurons that talk to I. So I, I show you, um, uh, so, in practical, I is a very big set with 10 to the power 11. So it's finite, but from all point, practical point of view, it's really not finite. That's why in the papers we consider I a countable set. Um, and we call a spike train the sequence, the sequence of one and zeros for each. So I show you the picture. Um, I saw it here, use a picture. So you see, here you have time, here you have these neurons, and for each one of the neurons, you indicate the point process with the times in which they had a spike. So what we do is consider a small time window, which is so small that uh, you don't have the possibility of having more than two spikes. Or, of course, you can have it, but uh, it's a simplification. You take a small time window of less three milliseconds. Everything I tell you can be translated in continuous time. Okay, let me give you an example. Um, so um, in this example, you remember that uh, given the past, the decision of having a spike or not depend on the path. So it depends in this example, in this way. So there is a, a function phi of i, and I must define this quantity u n of i, which is which is the membrane potential. In a few, in two or three minutes, I will ask you a question. So, well, here. So that is the u n of i. <clears throat> You have here uh, xm of j indicates when neuron j, whether neuron j is had a, a spike or not at time m. The times you sum from uh, immediately after the last spike time of neuron i up to n. Uh, so forget this for a moment. And then here you put the, the, the snap weight. This number could be positive, negative, uh, or zero. So if it is zero, it means that J does not affect I. If it is positive, this means that uh, uh, as activity of J has a positive influence on I. If it's negative, it means it has a negative influence on I. And this GNM is accounts for the for the spontaneous leak. So you receive some information, but you can lose it. Actually, you lose it because part of the of the eons you received. So I'm not going to tell you the the the, the biochemical activity, but you can lose it. So I I tell Cloud, Cloud, look, this move is very very good. So I said, oh, okay, maybe I'll try to see it. But if he does not do it immediately, because you cannot go to the theater to see a movie, or you don't did find it in YouTube or whatever, day after day, you will start forgetting about this. And maybe in one week, you entirely forgot. So this, this is the aging effect. And this has an important role in the in the way the system act, is, uh, acts, so phi i is a non-decreasing function. So the the bigger the value of u, the bigger the probability of having a spike. So when you have uh, 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 excitatory spikes, uh, you increase u n i. 
Well, if for a long time you just had the received then and not and did not had a spike, so this makes you decrease so in the following way. So that's an activate, it can be positive or negative. And important, there is no self-influence. It's useless to say you are good, you are good for yourself, you are good. So <laughs> this is not happening with Neon. So there is no self-influence. And G is a non-increasive function. It's that's a leaky effect. It could be constant, for instance, or it could decrease. But it's not increasing. So the, the, the first influence uh, ha, does not increase with time. It can only decrease. OK, so that's the model. Um, it, 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 it is really inspired by the description neurobiologists do of the mechanism of the, what they call uh, chemical synapses. Uh, I would try to avoid all, all the neurobiological terminology, which is really not important. And this is just an example. OK, so what I call the set of neurons which affect I is just a set of J, such that WJ goes to I is not 0. OK, so I remember in the two last formulas. So names, UNI is what we call membrane potential of neuron I, and it accumulates the stimuli coming from other neurons, either positive or negative. And each new spike is a probability, which is an increasing function of its accumulated potential. That's the formula here. And after spiking, the neuron reset its potential to zero. That's why the sum here starts uh, again every time I had a spike. So when you make a spike, you reset it to zero. And therefore, the spiking train is locally a chain with memory of variable length. Uh, and this is important because this is a mathematical feature which um, can help you, but very often makes the life much more difficult. Quiz. So I told you I was going to ask you questions. So, uh, let, so you remember, I have U N of I. It was a sum. So I don't know how I could return here. OK. So I remember the form of U N of I. I, I consider the contributions of all the other neurons which influence either positively or negatively I. And I have also a loss uh, due to this leak effect. Okay. So um, the, the time evolution depends only on UN of I. So when, uh, when the neurons spike, they reset values to zero, they contribute to the others. So you, the system you and I, uh, every time, at every time step, the, the membrane potentials uh, change its value. Either they are reset to zero and they receive a spike, either they, are, they increase their value, take into account what they received, if positive or decrease, if negative, and also you must take this into account. Now, it's natural to ask the following question. Why, 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 well, it's natural to consider UN as my main object. Of course, UN is, is a real number. So it's not so easy. It's more complicated than configurations which have value zero or one. And the, quiz, the question is, is UN a Markov chain? Well, I, I will tell you why it's not. Well, um, if the rate function, the probability function is not constant, UN is a Markov chain, if and only if the loss of memory, the, 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 the leak effect has no memory. So in this case, it is very easy. It's very easy 
to see that you you add the contributions. So if if the if the demo had a spike, you reset its value to zero. If not, you you reduce its value multiplying by ho, and then you add the contribution of the others. So you have a, a perfectly perfectly um, Markov time evolution. But in general, this is not the case. So in general, this is not exponential. So you must take into account uh, the time that uh, you had since the contribution arrived to know how to affect. So, and this is, is a fascinating, fascinating mathematical aspect of this object. Okay, this is a new class of non Markovian process having a countable number of interacting components. Therefore, it stands in a non trivial way the famous Spitz interacting particle systems, which is uh, the starting point of my, my, my activity, I guess, also cloud. Uh, but these processes are not Markovian in general. It also stands, so the one who first uh, uh, did the importance of process with memory of variable length is, an, is someone called John Marisny. He did it in the 80s. So more or less 10 years after Spitzer introduced interacting on particle system. And uh, what Marisny uh, pointed out uh, was the following. So if you want to model um, biological, political, uh, physical, situ a linguistic situation, you well you could start with the Markov chains. But memory one usually is not so good. So try memory two, memory three, memory four. But then if the memory is too big, doing statistics, this becomes impossible. And then they realized that in most cases, the dependence of the past is a form of the past itself. Um, it says that my internet connection is unstable. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Yes, Antonio, everything is fine. Cloud, you see me? Yes, yes. Yeah, no, I just received a, a message that is my, my net connection is unstable. So tell me. So, but now, uh, so, um, and then, when I, I start reading things about the spiking, the spiking activity, I realized that the activity of each neuron has a variable, is a, has a, had a memory of variable length due to the receptor. So it was just natural to put things together. Um, uh, but interesting that it's only locally of a variable length because you have all this network which interacts exactly in the same way the, the components of the Spitzer process. The first paper was called the interacting Markov process. But at, after the interacting, each one of them is no longer Markov, something much more complicated. Here is also the same. So I, I think it's, um, well, it's an entire situation. I think uh, 60 years after Spitzer, Intera introduced the interacting particle system and uh, 50 years after listening, see the stochastic change, uh, the finite uh, set of um, uh, alphabet. It's interesting to think putting things together because these are the good models for, for the neuronal activity. Uh, for other things also, for instance, uh, these are good models for social networks. But this process, is no longer of finite memory. It's not Markovian. It's a chain of infinite order. Now, the discrete time frame I present to you is not important. My first paper is Eva. We believe that it was simpler for biologists to understand the, the discrete time framework. Obviously, it was just too naive. For then, it's as difficult to discrete time or continuous time. But so we wrote our first paper in discrete time, and then we made vote orders in continuous time. But let me tell you the continuous time version. So uh, I have a, a, a point
point process which, are, which presents the spec spike in times of a neuron I. I consider the counting measures of the point process. I define exactly the same way as the membrane potential. Of course, here I need to define this as a Riemann Stilts integral of this uh, with respect to this point process. So every time I have the spike, I increase by this quantity or decrease by it. And then I start losing, losing uh, its value according to the function gi uh, as time goes by. And I have the last spike time. Um, and I observe then when the leak function is constant, so ut of e is just this, it's just this. So the property of a spike uh, in a, a, a physicist will tell you that is is proportional. This is not equal. It's more plus. Uh, it's more O of dt. So this is the first. Uh, so this is the first order presentation. And this is the past. Uh, so so everything uh, works exactly the same way. Uh, except that now we need to use this riemann stutz integral, some stochastic calculus. Okay, two basic questions as mathematicians. That were, were exactly the same questions Spitzer asked when he introduced the uh, interacting, interacting Markov systems. First is the existence of the process described by this formula. That's the first thing we ask. The second question is to describe the set of invariant quality measures for the process. And finally, how the process reaches the stationary regime? Well, now we can, uh, so have been working a lot in this last uh, 30 years in questions of perfect simulation for interacting particle systems. So, that's a, a natural question. So uh, I will try to, to address this question here using uh, the discrete time, the discrete time, the discrete time version of the model. Um, okay, so let's return to the to the to the discrete time version. So that's the transition probability. Transition probability, let me use this notation. And uh, can you hear me? Can you see me? You are here, you are there? Everything okay. is fine. Okay, so uh, I'm just trying to fix the notation. So, uh, and this is a complete past uh, up to time n. And then the definition is this one. Okay, warning. In general, in general, this transition probability is not continuous. Is this something which is quite, um, uh, well, it's a problem, it's nasty. When you do, when you do, so this in principle is a transition probability with, with infinite memory. But then in this framework, you, you like, usually people assume, assume continuity of transition probability. Well, this is the one in general, it's not continuous. And it has an infinite range memory. And this is true even with the set of neurons I is finite. So you remember that most papers, including the one I wrote with Robert Fernandez, with Xavier Bresseau, um, concerning chains have infinite order, uh, assumes continuity. But this is not the case here. So I arrive to my next quiz. Find an example that showing uh, showing uh, there is no no Z here. I'm sorry. So I, are you correct the the, um, the slides before sending to Claudio a version to to be put in the website? So find an example showing the non continuity of the transition probability. So, but what I mean by non continuity, I mean the following. So. I want to find the two sequences of uh, infinite pasts, so indexed by n, but this is a, is a global past, such that they coincide 
uh, when I look at the end, at the suffix, as the last m plus one point, they coincide. And, and yet, the probability that they are assigned to have at one after this past uh, it does not convert to the same value. So, uh, so this is a question for people working in in changes in memory of variable length. So I, I will give you a hint. So take two neurons, one, two. Two neurons which affect each other in the same way, one. Take this as a probability function we are considering. And take uh, no leak effect, so you don't lose. So the simplest possible case. And now you do the following. You consider your sequences being equal zero in the last suffix. So now you see what is the problem. So I tell you the last um, n plus one uh, steps had the value zero, but maybe you have the following situation after. This one is spikes a lot and not this one. So they put a lot of memory of potential here, and this one put nothing here. But then this one is spikes after. So this, which had a lot of, of spiking activity, just received one unit. Say maybe he offered 1,000 units here and just received one. So the transition probabilities are quite different. And this happens independently of the value of n. I can, so this, this process are not continuous. So you must find something else to, to, to do the job. So let me tell you so, but the situation is not disparate. So uh, let me give you a, a first theorem. So the first theorem have some um, some assumptions. So it, it start with a, the phi of i, which defines the the the, the way the, the membrane potential affects the probability of spiking. Let's suppose it's Lipschitz. Let's suppose that uh, that the snap rate this decays fast enough. So you could you could see you, you are looking the effect of. Uh, every bottom. So the set here is infinite. So in order uh, 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 this to be, um, uh, the sum to be finite, so uh, you must have essentially a, dec a, a fast decay of the absolute value of this when J uh, minus A increases. So you are assuming that you have uh, uniformity and very fast decay in absolute value of snap rates. Uh, well, and, and this, you, su you suppose that there is some spontaneous activity, and this helps you a lot. This helps you a lot. Then with this, you can prove the following theorem. So this is something I did with Evelo Charbach a long time ago when we started working on this. That so was our first theorem. So there is this unique stationary chain consistent with the dynamics, the speed of the convergence. So if you condition on what happens, so this one is a stationary situation. It's already in stationary situation. This one, you start with a, a past, which is not a stationary regime. And then you look at time, uh, what happened after n steps for a time interval of length m. So the M appears here, that's a triviality because uh, you just uh, do it for each step. So have N steps, you add them. But then this N here, which is a time which, which has passed be between the starting point and the present moment, it's here. When N goes to, to infinite, go to divergence, this goes to zero. So that's, that's uh, the, the, so you have a unique variant measure, you have a convergence to equilibrium which goes uh, fast. And moreover, if, the, if your- Let me ask you, Antonio, this, yes. this estimate is uniform over the past. 
Yes, 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 absolutely, yes, yes. And that does not depend on the past. And I can tell you more about epsilon n if I make an assumption about the lost, but this is more or less obvious. <laughs> if I tell you that I for, uh, there is a, a spontaneous leak which occurs very fast, better, very big. So it, it's not, uh, it's easy to imagine that epsilon n goes to zero very fast. So th that's not a big deal. <laughs> that's it's quite, uh, um, okay. So let me tell you a few words about the proof. The proof with something I, I, I like very much to use is a space-time Kalikov decomposition. So, so uh, first of all, I use the fact that phi i of u is bigger than delta always. That was one of the three conditions, and I consider and I consider uh, iid delta Bernoulli system c n of i. So these are independent random variables. So we take the value one with quality delta, and they are independent. And uh, then I make a coupling between my system and the IID delta Bernoulli system. And then I work uh, in, the, in the configuration space con conditioned on a realization of the Bernoulli system. So you, you see, this is quite uh, important because every time the Bernoulli system has a spike, uh, which is spontaneous, my system has a spike, so I can delimit the past. So this is very reminiscent of things that Harris did at the very beginning, when 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 Harris started looking at interacting particle system. Uh, I, I had the feeling that everything I did in my life was already suggested or present in Harris' work. Now, you see, due to the fact that I have this IID delta Bernoulli system and I have a, this coupling, um, the, memory, the memory of uh, the neuron at time n cannot be longer, cannot be longer than R i of n, which was the last time before m in which CM of i uh, had spontaneous activity. And then, Using these ingredients, I introduce an increasing sequence of sets which converge. So here there is something missing, a point to, and, a, and, a, and a, an arrow. That's the set of influences of I. I consider an increasing set of finite sets. And then uh, that's a proposition. I can write my my transition probability as a convex combination of a transition probabilities which have a memory bounded in the past and in space. So this is something which everybody can do on. You, you take a, go to the blackboard and there is a lot of patient, you succeed decomposing it. Interesting is that, uh, uh, well, what you use here is, is, um, is the property of phi and uh, the spontaneous activity, the possible spontaneous activity of each new. Okay, so um, comment. So this is a conditional decomposition, conditional on the realization of spontaneous spikes. The reproduction probability lambda k are random variables, they depend on C. And now we get uniqueness of the process via a kind of dual process, the clan of ancestors, which makes you look uh, what sets can influence you in the past and the space. And then uh, I, I can control this by making a comparison with a branching process. So this is quite, um, now it's not a quite classical in the group of researchers who we are. I guess everybody had already seen the papers on the clan of ancestors, I guess Pablo Ferrari and Nancy Garcia uh, used it several times, so, so did we. Um, 
And last observation, when you have a Kalikov space-time decomposition, you can have, a, you can define an algorithm of a perfect simulation. So this has been done um, by, um, well, it's already present in Kalikov, in Branson Kalikov uh, model a long time ago. And then um, uh, Comet, Ferrari, and Fernandes used it in a very important paper on chains of infinite memory. And then uh, we used uh, an extension of this for space time with Zabala Sherbar. So this is something we have been doing quite a lot. And the, it's it's um, reminiscent of duality. Duality, it's not duality, this process has no, no dual, but it's reminiscent. Challenge. Okay, that's a real challenge. Uh, the theorem I present to you assumes a Dubushin type condition, the uniform summability of the absolute value of the snap to weights. Well, that's tell you that uh, if a neuron J is very far away from I, its influence on I is very small. It decays very fast. If not exponentially, at least at least as, as, a, as the power two of the distance. So that's the kind of distance people in statistical physics uh, are used to, 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 to apply to prove theorems. But this is not a good condition in this case. And I remember the first time I presented this result in Marseille, a student asked me, but Professor Galbus, do you believe this is a good condition? And what is bad in this condition? What is bad is that it does not take into account the balance between excitatory and inhibitory snap debates. And everybody believes that this, uh, this balance is crucial uh, for the way, the way the brain functions. And okay, so this is a real mathematical question. It, it can be done, you can consider, for instance, um, a voter model or uh, a voter model in which you look at someone and either you copy his, his opinion or, control, or, or you become opposite to his opinion. You can imagine an easy model in which, so that's a spin glass. Uh, but, we, but now we don't need to put the interaction to be random. You fix them at the beginning. So I think it would be very, very, very interesting to have a, a result for this class of model, even simpler, taking into account the balance between uh, inhibitory and separatory snap rates. I have no idea how to do this. The tools have been using, uh, clan of ancestors, um, Kalikov type decomposition, comparison which is a branch process, are not uh, strong enough to solve this. So, if you have an idea. Okay, another challenging. The property of the direct graph of interactions uh, between neurons has been extensively discussed in the neuroscientific scientific literature. There are several candidates. It's likely supercritical erdos graphs, preferential attachment graphs, small world graphs, rich club graphs, they all have been presented as good candidates to describe the interaction structure of a neuronal system. I, I remember in the beginning I was in IMPA, I was discuss, discussing with Claudio uh, about this and Claudio has explained to me a result by uh, Bolobas result about the fact that uh, supercritical, not too much, not too supercritical, Eldogeny random graph uh, lo locally look like a, a tree. And we used this result uh, in our first paper. Okay, the point is that uh, in neuroscience, uh, people uh, present the, their favorite candidates and they do not discuss. They all uh, pretend that they are speaking about the same thing. The only thing is this, all these candidates have in common that they all have uh, the 
all, all, all over law property. Well, it would be interesting to understand how the structure of the random graph could be combined with the condition on the snap activates to assure existence, things like this. I don't know how to do it. But recently, uh, a young researcher, Antonio Marx Batista Nascimento, proved the existence of two phase transitions uh, for a version of the model, I will tell you immediately, uh, in a regular tree. In this model, all the, all the um, synapse, synapse weights are positive, equal one. And they are only local, only local. So we have a finite number of people influencing each neuron, and they are all constant and positive equal one. So this is a manuscript uh, to, uh, to be sent to archive, I hope, very soon. Now, a simplified model to conclude. Um, so let's take the set of neurons equal to Z. Let's suppose that each neuron only interacts with the two neighbors. So I interact with the I plus one or I minus one. So the membrane potential you define as before. And now you take the function as a uh, have side step function. So it takes value zero if uh, the membrane potential is zero or one if it is greater or equal one. So because you see the, now the each new can have a, a, any value of a positive integer, any positive. Can, have, can assume any positive integer, but now you have a step side function. So, I mean, neurons are either quiescent when they have a membrane potential zero or active, they have strictly positive membrane potential. When an active neuron spike, it gives plus one to the membrane potential of, uh, of its of, here is off, of its two neighbors. And become and becomes quiescent. Moreover, now the leak effect of uh, important simplification. Each neuron is exposed to a leakage effect led by uh, leading to a, an abrupt loss of potential. So from time to time, following a Poisson point process of constant rate gamma, every time the Poisson point process is, uh, has a uh, a mark, the, the corresponding year loses entirely its membrane potential. This is much simpler than the continuous effects that present before. But then we can prove some interesting things with this. So that's a representation. So when I spike, I give plus one to each one of my neighbors. And I can have a leakage at rate gamma. Well, is this a good description of the brain structure? Well, uh, assuming this nearest neighbor interactions is clear a simplification. But some nervous tissues, like the retina, neurons uh, appear in layers. So you have kind of linear interactions. So, well, it could be. Uh, reasonable for these models. But in any case, I guess the result I'm going to present to you now is more general. Uh, okay, we can define now the, the same model as before. So you have a point process and a dagger I. The point for some point process is red gamma. So that's so gamma. That's the, 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 the instance in which the, the neuron loses all its, its membrane potential. And then, as before, you have the in, in I star, which, which, are the, 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 which is a point process with the times in which the neuron I spikes. So it has a fluctuating rate, which depends on I. Now, the, the membrane potential, the integral, goes from Li of t up to t. And now Li of t is a superposition of two, two effects, last spike time or last 
uh, abrupt loss time. So you, you go from T up to Li of T. I don't know why, why I wrote this in this strange way. I should have put T here. I don't, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, and, and then you accumulate the potential in this interval. So this, this model was introduced by in a paper three years ago by Pablo Ferrari, myself, Avalo Chaba, and Nidia Grigorescu. And what we did for, was to prove that there was a critical gamma. A critical gamma. That you have a, the following type of phase transition. If gamma is bigger than gamma critical, so um, any spike, any neuron is But if gamma is smaller, then you have a positive probability that uh, the neurons uh, remain spiking forever. So it's a kind of um, uh, fast transition. If gamma is bigger, you have just one trivial invariant measure, everything quiescent. Otherwise, you have a second non-trivial invariant measure. Of course, everybody quiescent is invariant. But if gamma is small, you have a second one. Now, with this model, we prove the phase transition the following way. So, if I define eta t of i as phi of i, so this is one if u t of i is greater than one or zero otherwise, then this process is an interacting Markov system, which is additive in the sense of Harris. Uh, Harris, uh, an R is missing, oh my goodness. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Ted double R. And therefore, it has a dual. And um, so we can construct its dual and then use a contour argument in the dual process. And this, in this way, you can prove this to a critical point using classical Pyre's contour argument. So the quiz, but the quiz is just for Harris additive systems amateurs, say for Claudio. So that's for you, Claudio. <laughs> <laughs> Propose a graph const additive construction of the system and then identify the dual of the system. Okay, so th that's a quiz for, for uh, Harris ATV systems freaks. Okay, back to the finite case. Now I'm, 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 I'm concluding. I'm telling you something more interesting than the only existence. So in the finite case, the configurations in which all the neurons are quiescent is a trap, and you get there. I mean, if you take uh, uh, the set of neurons as minus n, minus n plus one, or up to n, then for any gamma positive, any gamma, you stop spiking. That's very clear, it's, it's elementary. In other words, if you define the extinction time Tn as the first time all the neurons have a membrane potential zero, then uh, this extinction time is finite, is probably D1. But now the interesting question is how do you get there? How do you get there? Does the, the road towards extinction, uh, extinction there is some thing, extinction, so um, there is a problem with the English, I correct it also, extinction. Uh, uh, how does it evolve as a function of gamma? So remember, one over gamma is the average time before the membrane potential of a given neuron collapse due to the leakage effect. Well, when gamma is small, the survival time of the system seems unbounded and the extinction time unpredictable. In opposition, when gamma is bigger, it is reasonable to guess that the system will soon be trapped by extinction. Let's see. So if I remember correctly, uh, this is what the Redac called uh, uh, a situation of a dynamic phase transition. I, I guess that, that was the name he gave to the phenomena. Uh, I, can't, I could not find the paper in this paper today doing this. So let's see, let's look at the simulation. 
So let, let's say case when, when gamma is, is very small. So that is the, 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 the histogram of the distinction time. So you, we, 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 uh, so this was done by Morgan André during this PhD dissertation to illustrate it. I, I borrowed it from him. So you look at the histogram and this looks very much, very much to an exponential, very much. And the survival time, which is, uh, uh, this value is a probability that the system survive more than this. Looks also very much to exponential. And if you look at the time evolution, the time evolution, you have the feeling that this system is in a stationary situation. Of course, uh, it fluctuates around a value, but well, uh, it apparently is stable. Well, obviously, you know that the problem is that uh, he can always fluctuate too much and reach the trap. So that's the number of neurons which are active, which are active. So if the numbers of neurons which are active reach zero, it gets trapped. And so uh, you, we know that uh, sooner or later, the system will get trapped in the quiescent situation. The situation is quite different when gamma is big. Then you see the, the time of the distinction renormalized looks very much concentrated in, uh, in, uh, in the value one. So that's, that's the normalization by its expected value. And the survival function, the red one is exponential. This does not look like as an exponential. And if you look at the trajectory, it's clear that it goes to extinction. Now, there is a theorem. So this is a theorem uh, Morgan André proved last year as part of his PhD dissertation. So if the is the parameter gamma of the random leak is greater than one, so uh, the extinction time renormalized by the expectation converges to one, exactly as you, as you see here, that's one. But uh, uh, there is a gamma star, which is smaller than gamma C, uh, uh, such that for all gamma between C is strictly greater than the, and gamma star, you 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 have uh, you have a convergence to exponential random time with mean one, which is exactly the situation of met stability that we have been discussing. So this is the dynamic phase transition. And now uh, to conclude, I will show you uh, some references and direction of our research. Ah, challenge. Okay, so you see the result goes not up to gamma C, but just up to gamma star. So the challenge is to prove the convergence to the exponential for all gamma between zero and gamma C. So I guess this is an interesting question. And of course, what happens when gamma is equal to gamma C? So that's the end. Okay, reference and direction of research. So the model was introduced by, God, by Eva and myself in this paper. And then the continuous time was introduced in, the, in a paper with Demasi, Pesut, and Abdel Sharbar. And the simplified model was introduced in this paper in 2018 by Ferrari, Gingo Abdel Sharbar, and myself. Phase transition met stability. So you have the result that I have, uh, have just told you. And then there is a new result by Andre and, uh, and Planche in which they consider the same model, but on a complete graph. And finally, uh, Evalo Sherbar uh, and Pierre Montmarcher have just obtained a result of met stability uh, in, 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 for, for the model, really, the model, not, not the simplified version. It's already available in archive, but not yet published. So statistical identification, of course, one important question is to identify who interacts with who. 
And as far as I know, there are only two results in this direction. One uh, by Lynn Duarte, Evelyn Sherba, Graham Austin, myself, last year in Bernoulli. And then a very, very, very nice recent paper by Guilherme Austin and Patricia Renaud Bourret, in, in which use the extended the, the composition and between very nice results. So I strongly suggest you to read this very, very nice paper. Core becoming field for neural network. Um, I, I think I think that I, that they all speak about the, the model we consider in continuous time. In the case, the phi of i is linear, uh, so they have um, the techniques very, which are very different from the one used by Evelyn Sherbar, Montmartre, Patricia Renaud Bourret, myself, Pablo. So. I, I suggest uh, all of you to, to read this paper, it's really beautiful. Okay, that's the end of it. Thank you very much. It was a little bit too long, I'm sorry. Well, thank you, Antonio. Oh, well, I, my hand for the other people. And a well, oh, lot of people. I was not aware, everybody. So I have. <laughs> like um, 60 by, by counting here and on YouTube. So, uh, well, we are open for questions. So maybe before people uh, type their questions on the chat, let me ask you a question. So uh, I guess these models were introduced in order to, um, to obtain a stochastic model, which would um, in which you would observe certain phenomena that uh, you observe in neuron transmitting. So, which are these um, these phenomena which we would like to to observe in these models? Interesting question. When when Ev and I wrote the first paper, uh, that was a question we asked ourselves. So it's very easy for our problem to invent a model which looks like whatever you want. But then um, can I find some of the qualitative features you find in, in real life? And then, uh, well, I, I didn't tell you, but in my first paper with Eva, we discussed the, the correlation, correlation between the time interval between successive uh, 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 spike in times of an neuron. And um, there were evidence that they, uh, they have very small correlations. So we tried to see if we could prove this well, if you if you do this, to do this, you need to, to put uh, some ingredients in the graph of interactions, and what we did was exactly to consider the Eldorado random graph with a slightly, uh, which is slightly supercritical. And, and then I remember I discussed with you because I was trying to find a random graph, and the random graph of Eldorado is slightly supercritical is one of the candidates presented, for instance, by Beggars and Plants. They have seen, and we, we can prove the, 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 the strong decorrelation of the results. Another thing is that if you look, if you go to Google and you write brain and metastable, you find uh, thousands of titles, thousands. And uh, actually people observed several things. You, you observe then when you, look at the cortical at the activity of neurons. So you can see in a simulation or in vitro or in vivo 100 that you, and, 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 and you, and if you can observe for a long time, you see something which is very reminiscent of mass stability, which is a following thing. You see an, an activity which is an average. So you see the, the density of spikes in a, in a fixed region uh, uh, in time. You see an activity which goes like this, and suddenly it jumps. 
and and Kerem Shkriya. So people say, well, this is match stability. So it was quite natural to ask if this is meta stability. So now we know that we can prove meta stability for these systems. But now, uh, so, uh, and what has neurobiology? So, of course, meta stability is a general effect, it's not particularly. But now, um, uh, with the Hippopesuti, uh, Evelo Sherbar, Stoff Kuzan, and myself, we made a small model in which the, the snapping weights change themselves as a fact of the activity. So, because this is the way we learn. We learn because the, the interaction change. And so we try to, to, this, to model uh, um, synaptic, um, synaptic plasticity. So the, the change of the synaptic weights in order to describe um, um, short-term memory. So you see, I, every morning I must take three pills, different pills, and just one of each one, or each one of them. Very often, I start talking to someone and I forgot which one I took, and it's a problem. I must stop. So it's this short-term memory, or you say, well, my other the other I must go with this one, and then you know it, but you when you arrive, you forgot entirely. If it's two, one, three, or three, two, one. This short-term memory. We start discussing this with Maria Olalia. That was the motivation was because Maria Olalia was in, by, visiting us in São Paulo. And uh, it was an interesting moment, very Joel Lebovitz. There were several people there, Mariola, Christophe Puzza, uh, Stolf, uh, and I asked the Christophe to speak about short-term plasticity. So we, so we made a model. So, and it looks like you can see something which is, we stay in a region, which is not the stationary region for some time. And now, Christophe Rosa and Morgan André had just are finishing a paper showing that you can record, uh, you can remember several different things when. So, uh, so that's a very good question. Let me tell you where we fail. So, we proved the, uh, the hydrodynamic behavior of the system in different situations. So, there is the, the first paper I wrote with Rico. Anna de Maas and Eva, and then uh, 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 Guilherme Ost, Annaline Duarte, obtain a, a more, more general result in which you look at local hydrodynamic limit. So, and the goal was to, to be able to derive the time evolution of um, fMRI or EEG or later cephalographic records from the microscope. So we're able to derive, but we're unable to see in the limit, the features which suppose. So we need something else we don't know. So, uh, so experts in hydrodynamics are welcome <laughs> because don't know. But we, we know how to prove some things. We don't know, for instance, how to, I don't know, I don't think we know how to, to, how to model long time learning a long time memory. Short term memory, we, we do. And it's nice because when I started discussing with Maria Olalia, we had an, a, an idea, we discussed for a few days, I guess three or four days. And then I had been working with Eva and Christophe, we didn't succeed. And in the last day I was in L'Aquila, who had the idea, who saved, as usual, a Hiko Enrico <laughs> had the idea. So I invite all of you to read this paper with Enrico. His name is Short Term Plasticity. It's a nice short model. So I, I, I guess I, I gave some indications of the little we know and the huge amount of things we don't know. Mario Lali, you have a question. Maybe you want to formulate it on. Yeah, I can, I can do it. It's just, yeah. uh, so thanks Antonio for the very nice talk. I missed the beginning because I thought this starts a little bit later. I got confused with the schedule. Anyway, uh, so about this um, uh, result of André, uh, do you expect that the deterministic limit also holds for all gamma bigger than gamma critical or 
uh, or there is some reason to expect something else? Well, uh, uh, Lalia, uh, no, I don't think, well, my feeling, I, I don't think for the particular case of this model uh, with Pablo and uh, Eva and Eli, I don't think so. But for random graphs, uh, I, 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 I'm sure you have to, 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 to be here. So for random graphs, for random graphs like, uh, well, you no, see, for trees, that's a result of Antonio Marcos. So I guess now the thing to do is to consider random graphs like uh, Eldo Schreni using the fact that locally they look like uh, a tree and to... Um, no. Well, no, but maybe, maybe, maybe the question, I was asking something simpler. You ah, have this okay. result of uh, Andrea, where you take uh, a finite graph uh, with say N is the volume and you mm -hmm. look at the extinction time, tau n, and so in the small gamma, this is asymptotically exponential. In gamma bigger than one, I didn't understand the reason for one, it is deterministic limit. So like in the contact process. Yes. So, and my question had to do is, is there something specific or do you expect uh, this first result to hold also for all gamma bigger than gamma critical, that it converts quickly to, you know, it. Uh, my, my, I, now I'm not sure, but I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not sure. So maybe I'm, I'm telling you something wrong, uh, but I guess gamma critical is one. <laughs> ah, okay. Ah, it's one. Ah, okay. I guess. I... So when I wrote ah, right. my, my that's I didn't yeah, have okay. the paper. Okay, okay. That, that answers. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, no, there but is that... uh, ah, okay. another thing which, uh, because uh, maybe when we spoke was right after you had uh, this uh, that uh, Rico had suggested, but uh, I, I think that there is a class of processes that we have been playing with um, with Renato and uh, Daniel Ungaretti and Tom Manfred, mm -hmm. uh, where you consider a kind of contact process, but um, mm -hmm. the, it's not anymore exponential. Mm -hmm. And of course, this process is not Markovian, but I have a vague memory that um, the model we were talking, I mean, I mean, you have uh, the spin, which would be the state uh, healthy or infected, you know, say something that determines that uh, some spin, and also the age. And in your case, these ages that for us were independent renewal processes, <laughs> for you, they are kind of. Um, they have an interacting renewal structure. And I remember that we wanted to discuss as if they were sort of a, this feature renewal model that we, we feel. But I think it's maybe now good to look at back because maybe there are some new ideas that one could explore in that uh, that model. I don't know yet. I didn't have well, time. Well, I, do, I do hope you can do it in a very near future because I think you can contribute a lot. Uh, uh, I, I, I do think so. No, I, no, I, I hope. No, Imarola, you, you know, it's, it's, it's things that I, I, I have been in Aquila for one month. And, uh, now? In the no, pandemic? No, no, no. When ah, I did, all right. uh, <laughs> and then uh, nothing arrived. We had this initial yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Oh, yeah. And then the last day, I was about to leave. What now? Before Enrico had the idea. Yeah, you mentioned. So, I, yeah. I guess so. Uh, <laughs> no. And it was obvious, but uh, nobody told about it. Enrico had so, the idea, so I hope you we will do the same for this model. No, yes. I mean, our model doesn't solve anything for for your situation that's more involved, but I think it's uh, maybe it helps to, to, it helps. Maybe we need to discuss more sometime. Okay, yeah. uh, let, well, let's, uh, let's give an appointment to discuss more, my yeah. <laughs> I, I will call you, my own lad. <laughs> okay, that's fine. <laughs> well, also, I, I have mentioned it to Luis Renato also. 
uh, and to Danielle that I know I didn't explain your model because it will, I didn't remember exactly, but I think it would be good to, to think it back because it's very interesting. Anyway. Good, good. Thank, Thank you, you for the talk. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions? Any other question? Leonardo. Ah, yes, can I? Leonardo. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> okay, before you said that uh, you prove the existence of uh, the invariant, an invariant measure, and I wanted to ask if uh, it makes sense uh, uh, to have some to have stationary states in a, bi in a biological ne neural networks. Since, I mean, something that you have always well, some. some that's a good question. That's a good question. Uh, well, um, if you want my, my personal feeling, I, 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 I guess the brain behaves in a, in a continuous metastable situation. Of course, uh, you have uh, external stimuli arriving all the time. Yeah. So I guess uh, the, the stationarity uh, is, is just a, a simplification in a situation in which everything uh, remains the same, you have you just have the stochasticity, but uh, I, I, I guess in real life. So we are not that uh, happy to have a stationarity. In, in the paper, in the paper I mentioned, uh, so I, I, the, the, the PDF will be available, correct. Uh, in the paper with, um, with Guilherme, Eve and Alina on the, uh, on, on the statistical uh, in the identification of a graph interaction, one of the things we did is to is to show the existence without uh, without uh, the need of uh, without uh, uniqueness. Uh, every time we use uh, we use uh, we use um, uh, per perfect simulation tools, which are suggested by Kalikov um, composition, where um, lead, were pushed toward towards existence. So one of the questions I'd like to ask uh, people um, expert in, in clan of ancestors like Nancy or Pablo is how to use the clan of ancestors in one phase of the system. So condition that to be in one phase and then to be able to use this tool in a situation you don't have uniqueness of the invariant measures. Can you hear me, Nancy? Yes. <laughs> and, and, and another, another question. Okay. Um, do you have any indication about this stationary measure if it works, if it has a, for example, some, it has a nearest neighbor interaction or is close to Gibson or something? No, like no, that? no, I don't think it's Gibson at all. No, I don't think it's near, no. I think, I think well, look, I don't think so. Um, it, it's kind of a, a starting point for me to avoid using Gibson point of view because this has led already very bright people in the 80s to a complete failure. So in the eighth, a great number of um, what, um, uh, wonderful mathematicians. So the best, the best one, Chuck Newman, Bell Bolobars, the best ones who become interested in neurobiology and did things, but this had no impact at all in neurobiology. It had a lot of impact in probability theory or maybe statistical physics, I don't know, but no. So I don't think we should start putting putting uh, Gibson. Uh, so let let me return the question to you. If I give you a, a process with um, variable memory, with uh, with me memory variable lens, this is not Gibson. And uh, and and the neuron has a variable is a has a memory variable lens because it is set its value. So. Uh, I wrote a paper with Pierre Collet trying to use in some something like uh, the the dynamic formalism for process with variable length memory, but um, I don't think so. You see, you are in a situation which is not Markovian, which in, in which things are different. I, I, I'm, I'm not. It's not clear for me. Maybe I'm wrong, but uh, I, I I I can see that in the 80s. The, the, the huge force 
did by uh, by lots of very bright person did not lead to um, any modification in neurobiology. Well, thank you, Antonio. Okay, thanks. Luis Renato, you had a question. Luis, we can't hear you. No, Luis is not connected anymore. Ah, so maybe I, I, no, maybe I was confused. Are there any other question? Well, if not, well, thank you very much, Antonio. Let's thank Antonio again for this very nice talk. I mean, we had very nice questions. So just uh, remind you that uh, we'll continue next week with another talk. And there is also a series of um, talks, seminars starting tomorrow. So maybe Mario Lali, you want to say something about that? Yeah, um, well, I, it's going to be usually on Wednesdays. Uh, on Wednesdays at uh, 4 p.m. for our time, you know? And tomorrow I think it's Terry Lyons. Now I don't remember the title. I have sent it uh, by email, but uh, now I don't remember exact title of this talk. So this is organized by many people. The idea is to have some, uh, some general kind of seminars which fit uh, in terms of uh, time zone for uh, part of uh, for the west uh, coast of the US and Latin America that uh, uh, sometimes all this uh, in Europe are too early. I mean, to have a different time, time zone and to have a different, um, I mean, to open more for the Americas. So it's called Seminar of the Americas or something like that. Yeah. So. If someone uh, didn't receive and uh, wants me to include him in a list uh, or to send him the, this announcement where it's explained how to get it automatically every week, because I am afraid to be sending to 200 people every week and people get upset with me. So, <laughs> okay, that's like that. Okay, so, well, thank you again, Antonio. Very nice seminar. And, um, Thank you for the invitation. <laughs> let's meet again on next uh, Tuesday. So bye-bye. Stay well. Yeah.